Bless each and every one of you. We welcome you tonight to the program, the Word of Power Gospel Hour. We thank the TV for letting us air on here. My name is Reverend Ronald Davis, <clears throat> and the name of our ministry is Word of Power Ministries, uh, End Time Harvest Incorporated. Uh, we just thank you tonight for being with us, and I pray tonight God will open your heart up that you would receive the engrafted Word of God that it be planted in your heart that is able to save the soul. That's what the Bible says, to receive the engrafted word of God that is able to save the soul. You know, in this race, we all, the Bible talks about uh, we all run the race over Corinthians. We're all running the race, and we're to endure and to run our race and to finish it. Jesus came to planet Earth, and he ran the race that the, the Heavenly Father gave him and set before him. He ran his race, and he finished his course. That's why we have salvation today, because he went upon the cross at Calvary. And you know what motivated and inspired Jesus Christ of Nazareth to do that? John 3.16 says that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, and whomsoever shall believe shall not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus came into the world not to condemn the world, but he came to save the world. We're not on this TV, and I do not preach the gospel to condemn people. The word is what convicts you if you're in sin it's not me condemning you it's the word convicting you because you need your heart changed and you need to be cleansed by the word the name of my message tonight is mercy if there's one thing that this world needs in this hour and one thing that the god's people in the church needs is his mercy and we're going to be looking at the scriptures and studying them tonight and we're going to be reading and studying about mercy there's one thing that we need and we've got to have is the love and the mercy of God and the compassion of God in the church again. Church, if we don't have this, people's looking at us. If we don't move in love and mercy and compassion, you can be the most anointed person in the world, move in the gifts so gloriously when the anointing of God is upon you, but then when that anointing lifts, you can be the worst person that ever lived in the flesh. And that's what we're going to go talk about tonight. You know, many people has analyzed the gifts and the anointings. The gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. You get that at the day of salvation. It's a gift from God. Just like salvation, righteousness is a gift. Mercy is a gift. Mercy. Jesus, God have a mercy upon us because he sent the Lord Jesus Christ to die for our sins. That was mercy. And, you, and we need mercy for one another. If there's something that I see in a church that's not right, is we're not having, walking in the fruits of the Spirit. A lot of Pentecostals and Charismatics have got their eyes on the gifts of the Spirit, but they don't have the fruits of the Spirit. Listen, when, when you bear the fruits of the Spirit, you're a written red epistle of all men. People will look at you and they'll say, there's something about this person that's different. Because the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace. If we don't have love of church again, I want to tell you something. That was the greatest commandment. God said to love him first of all. Love the Lord thy God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And everything that's within you. And then the second greatest commandment of all the commandments was to love each other. And mercy is a part of love because it's motivated by love. And if there's one thing we need in the church again. How can you say you love God when you stand up if you're a minister and you're preaching in the pulpit. You say you love God and you don't love people. That's a lie. Liars will go to hell. The Bible says that. Matter of fact, in Malachi chapter 3, the Lord, the Lord said, I will come as close as judgment, and I'll be a swift witness against adulterers, uh, against liars. Amen. Huh? Amen. Let's hear an amen out there. Let's preach the word of truth again. Come on. How are you going to say you love God and get up in your pulpit? Some of you ministers, not all, but you need to repent tonight. Some of you get up in your pulpit and say you love God, but then you turn around and judge people in your own congregation. You sacrificed the little lambs when Jesus Christ was the final sacrifice that came to shed his blood, who was the final atonement, the final sacrifice of the almighty living God, and through that blood we have forgiveness of sins. We need to get our hearts right in the ministry. We need to get our hearts right in the pulpits. Amen. We need to have mercy toward one another once again. I pray this message convicts you. Father, I pray every under the voice, the anointing of the Holy Spirit and the voice of your word that goes forth that you would empower. That every minister that needs to hear this message that needs the fruit in their spirit, 
tonight that needs mercy and love again, that needs to be refired up again to do what you call them to do. Father God, we're, I'm not here to condemn them. I'm here to bring conviction to them because the devil has tried to stop them in what they're doing for you. And God, I pray tonight that, that the power of your word would go forth and be planted in the hearts tonight that would bring forth deliverance, would bring forth healing and restoration, that would bring forth the plan of God in your ministers' lives and in the lives of your people, Father God. And Father, I thank you. Empower your word anointed tonight, God. And Father, I thank you. And if there's some of you out there needs to repent, if you're a minister, that don't mean nothing. I'm a minister, and I have to check my heart out all the time. The Bible says, check your own heart, judge your own heart, that you be not judged by God. I'd rather judge my own heart, because I, I, when God judges you, chastises you, and corrects you, sometimes it's not a nice thing to go through. It's not a good thing. But then if he doesn't correct us, he wouldn't be a loving Heavenly Father. If God didn't take them things out of our heart and out of our life that needs to be taken, the enemy would come along and devour us and destroy us. There's many in the ministry today that, that has hooks in them and they need to be taken out. That's what God's doing. In this hour, I'm going to tell you something. God's cleansing his church. I don't care if you're ministers, who you are. God, rather, even if you're a minister, for you to make heaven than you to move gloriously in the gifts and turn around and act like the devil and lose your own soul. That didn't avail you nothing. If Paul said over in 1 Corinthians, he said, I bring my body under, and I bring it into subjection. Subjection to what? The Holy Spirit. In other words, Paul said, I'm going to make this spirit, soul, and body line up with the Word of God. Because he went on, Paul went on to say, even if I preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and win means of souls, I myself may be cast away. Paul knew even if he moved gloriously in the gifts, if he raised the dead and everything, he knew in the end that he had to work out his salvation too. See, people, the Bible says we need to preach this gospel right again. We need to get down here and preach it right and walk right because the walk's got to match up the call. The call has to catch up. The fruits has to catch the call. The character has to catch up with the call. That's what it's all about. That's what God is doing in this hour. God wants fruit in our lives. He wants us to be like the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what the fruit is, love, joy, peace. It's having his character and his nature and let him perfect us and change us. I've seen people raise the dead and I've seen turn around in the flesh and they, they stunk in the flesh. They was an Ishmael in the flesh. And God wants holiness back in the church. And I'm telling you, he's cleansing and purifying his church. And I'm here to tell you because he's been doing it with me and to me. God just cleansed me and delivered me of some things because my walk with God came to a halt and a stop because of things in my life. And I had to lay them down, and I had to get rid of them. You see, God has to sometimes bring us to a place to where we need deliverance before we can walk on with him. Because the anointing of God and the power of God in your life can also bring blessing, but it can also bring automatic judgment on ourselves. God wants us to be like his son Jesus. The name of my message tonight is on mercy. The definition of mercy is loving kindness, showing compassion, pity, for the undeserving. God had, we were undeserving, and he sent his son in the world to take our undeserving sin. And listen to me tonight. I don't care if you're a minister. There's some ministers that God's going to bring down because they're prideful, they're haughty, and they're cocky. And I've seen it. I've been that way myself in the past, had pride in how God was using me, and pride in, in, in what I knew. You know, the Bible says, knowledge puffeth up. It's the Spirit that balances everything out. And if you're walking in the Spirit and you're living in the Spirit, I tell you what, you'll walk the way Jesus walked. You'll love people. And when they offend you, you'll forgive them and walk on and have mercy on them. That's what the church needs again is mercy. We're not to sit in the judgment seat of Moses and judge people. I don't care if you're a minister. God didn't call you to judge. He called us to have mercy because we'll be judged with a stricter judgment. It says that in the Bible in James. We'll be judged with a stricter judgment. Ministers will. we got to walk above reproach and love people again. Hallelujah. We're trying to do the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was sent to convict people and deliver them. If they need deliverance, God anoint us. But it's the Holy Spirit's job to deal with them. And he's dealing with ministers and the church. The ministry is, the ministers are set there in the fivefold ministry to perfect the saints. But we have to be perfected first. We, and, and if you're going to stand up in a pulpit, you've got to have mercy. And you shouldn't be up there pointing fingers and judging God's people. Preach the message. Let the Holy Spirit do His work and convict them. And then they'll repent with a godly song that will cause them to not sin against God again because they heard God. Then they'll repent. 
and let God cleanse them and deliver them and do whatever he needs to do. Hallelujah. Exodus 25, chapter 25, verse 16. It says this. Exodus 25, verse 16. It says, And thou shalt put into the ark the testimony which I shall give thee, and thou shalt make a mercy seat of pure gold. Then we went on down here, and it had verse 18, And thou shalt make two cherubims of gold, of beaten work shalt thou make them, and the two ends of the mercy seat. These, this mercy seat was above the ark of God, and the two angels were at the end, and the wings were touching each other over the mercy seat. Hallelujah. And we go on over here down to verse... 22, and it's, God said, and there I will meet with you, and I will commune with you from above the mercy seat. You know why? Because God had mercy on us. He had pity. Remember what I said? It was loving kindness and pity for the undeserving. Hallelujah. We were all sinners. Hallelujah. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Our righteousness is a filthy rags. We've all sinned and fallen short but thank God for his mercy. And God wants us to have mercy like him toward each other. Especially in the church. If you're called by his name, you're a blood-washed blood child of God. We've got to have mercy and love toward one another again. Because my Bible said, he that hates his brother over, the, I think, the first or second epistle of John, he that hates his brother is a murderer. Are you, are you guilty today of being a murderer? That's what God called you. Me, myself, too, if I don't keep my heart cleansed and right toward people. If I hold all in my heart and don't have mercy on people, I'm the same as a murderer. God called me a murderer. Come on, let's preach this gospel right. Come on now. Get on your knees and seek God again and ask Him if this word is true. A lot of times people are offended by the word of God. It's not me. You're not offended with me. You're offended with the word. Sometimes people is offended at those that deliver the message. But if it is the message of God, open up your heart and receive it because God wants to change you. A lot of times we harden our heart and we won't receive the engrafted word of God that's able to save the soul. Because the devil don't want us to. He cuts us off. Hardens our heart. Puts bitterness and unforgiveness in us toward people. We're unmerciful. And we've got to have mercy back in the church again. A church, you need to hear this. Everybody under the sound of my voice and anointing the Holy Spirit, you need to hear this again. Some of you harden your heart and you need to repent. I do it. I have to stay before God that he can show me me. Like looking in a mirror and I see myself inside. We need to judge our own heart. We need to judge our own heart. Amen. Over in Leviticus chapter 16. Thank you, Lord. Leviticus chapter 16, verse 13 or 14. It says, verse 16, 13, 14, 15. Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering, a ram off, and a ram for a burnt offering. He shall put on a holy linen coat, and he shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh, and shall be girded with a linen girdle, and with a linen mitre shall he be attired. These are holy garments, therefore shall he wash his flesh in water, so to put them on. Then we go on down here, and it says, it's verse 6, uh, verse six. And Aaron shall offer up his offering of the sin offering, which is for himself, and make atonement for himself and for his house. And then as we go on over here, to verse 13, that was verse, that was verse 3, 4, 5, 6. Now we're going to verse 13, and it says, And he shall put the incense upon the fire before the Lord, that the cloud of incense may cover the mercy seat that is upon the testimony that he die not. That he may cover the mercy seat that is upon the testimony. And he shall take of the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward and before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle the blood with his finger seven times. And then they went on and killed a, a, a goat and sprinkled the blood on the mercy seat. And then Aaron would lay his hands on the other goat, which was called a scapegoat, confess the sins of Israel on that goat's head and release him and run him off, and he would escape and go into the wilderness. You know this was a perfect example of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because of our sins, one goat had to die, one lamb had to die, the lamb of God had to die, and we was forgiven. Our sins, it was our sin, that's why the sins was laid on the head of the goat. He was running off with that sin. That was a shadow of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was the scapegoat that went on the cross to shed his blood for us. We was the sinful ones that went running off into the wilderness. It was his sin, even the doves when they sacrificed them. The blood was sprinkled upon one dove. 
One died and shed his blood, and the blood was sprinkled on the other one, and he was loosed and flew off toward the heavenlies. That represented the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ for our sins, who was resurrected, took his blood, and took it back to heaven, and sprinkled upon the altars, the heavenly altars. Oh, hallelujah. Thank God for the Lamb of God. We wouldn't have salvation today. We'd still be cow animals all the time if it wasn't for him. The sin offering and the atonement for the whole nation of Israel was to be done by the high priest once a year. This was known as the Day of Atonement for Israel. The high priest went behind the veil into the Holy of Holies where the ark and presence of God was. He then applied the blood to the mercy seat above the ark. And the mercy seat was above the ark. The mercy seat was above the ark where the plates, the tablets was. The tablets was inside of the ark. That represented the word of God. The mercy seat was above the word. God magnifies his word above his name. And that mercy seat was above his word. How much more should we have mercy toward one another, church? This is Revelation Knowledge tonight. Open your hearts up and listen. The reason many of you are going through the trials you're going through, you're putting your own self in them. Jesus said every branch that does not bear fruit will be cut down and cast into the fire. Every area of your life that's not bearing fruit will go and be cast back into the fire. And you wonder why you're not growing and going on. That's why you stay in the frying pan. You stay in the oven. It's because you're not letting him develop and do what he wants in your life. So he has to put you back in there. Oh, God, Jesus, uh, John the Baptist said, there comes one mightier than I. And he'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. And he's got his fan in his hand. And I tell you what, he's fanning that fire today. Because he wants us to bear fruit. He said, you shall know them by the fruits. You shall know them by the fruits. Not by their anointing, their power, by the fruits. And the Bible says that, that every branch that does not bear fruit shall be cast into the fire. And he's going to put your life back into that fire until you bear fruit. So you might as well just say, I give up, God. Here I am. If I have pride, get rid of it. Lord, deliver me of it so you can move on with God because you're hindering yourself. You're letting the devil or your flesh hinder yourself. Hallelujah. And a lot of us, it's because we don't have mercy. We don't have love for one another. If there's one thing God's wanting in this church is love, mercy, and compassion to give because it glorifies Him. You can win more witnesses. You can witness more and be a walking witness, a, a, a walking red epistle of all men by the fruit that's in your life when you have the character and nature of Jesus Christ. You can win more people. than moving into gifts and raising the dead and healing people. That's all part of it. You've got to have that in the same time. You've got to have that. But God wants the fruits. God looks at the fruit. Listen, the gift and the calling was given at the day of salvation. That was a gift given unto you and me. But he didn't give us the fruit. That's something we've got to work on. That's something that has to be developed. Hallelujah. And it takes time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you. I'm glad that God has got people preaching this gospel right. I, I call them the glory glitter kids. Running out here with the glory and the anointing. They fast some, but they don't glorify God when they're in the flesh. They're flesh. When we're walking in the flesh, we got to walk in the spirit too. See, that's why I want the fruit and the gifts and come into a balance with it. Some of the people is out of balance. Too much fruit, no gifts, and some's got all gifts and no fruit. We need to come back into a balance. The church doesn't walk right down the middle of the road again. God's going to bring it back in line and back in balance. Now, back to where I was at. It says, the atonement to atone means to cover for sin. Hebrews 9.22 says, without the shedding of blood, there is, there is no remission for sins, forgiveness for sins. Remission means forgiveness. The blood was applied and covered the mercy seat first on the ark because God had mercy on our sins. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God because, because of the blood on the mercy seat, God pardoned our sins and forgave us. We don't have to shed our own blood. We, the sacrifice and the blood of that animal covered our sins. God didn't kill us and sacrifice us. In the beginning, he sacrificed the animals, and that blood of that animal covered and atoned for our sins. Hallelujah. He was our, Jesus was our substitute. He was a God's atoning lamb for the sins of the world. He shed his own blood for our sins. He was our substitute. He took our place. There is no longer any shedding of blood or sacrifice today. Jesus was the final sacrifice. When we sin, Romans 6.23 says, The wages of sin is death. Jesus had mercy on us. He took the sins of the world upon himself. He took our punishment and wrath and judgment that was rightfully ours. 
He was sinless. He took our sins. 1 Peter 2.22 and 2.24. I want to go there. 1 Peter 2.22. I want to give you these scriptures. 1 Peter 2.22. Hallelujah. Thank God for His Son Jesus tonight. Oh, He was the, the living Lamb of God that loved us, that laid down His life willingly. He didn't have to lay it down. He could have took it back up any time He wanted to. He could have took it back up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. 1 Peter 2.22 And it says, Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Jesus never come against no one except the devil. He didn't come against people. He called the religious people hypocrites. Jesus was against the religious demon and the religious people. Hallelujah. And verse 24 says, Who his own self bear our sins in his body on the tree, that we being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we were healed. Glory, hallelujah. He never sinned. It was our sins that put him on the cross. And we must remember that. You know what? It's our sins today that re-crucifies him. Because if you willfully sin today, the Bible says there is no more blood shed for sins. There's no more dying for sin. You willfully walk in sin today, the Bible says that we shed the blood of Jesus Christ, tread it underfoot. We need to walk holy today. We need to walk clean. And we need to glorify Him. Hallelujah. And we have forgiveness of sins, but you keep willfully going out and sinning. You need to cry out for deliverance from God. In the name of Jesus, no overcome the flesh and the devil. He was sinless. God so loved us that He sent His only Son to die and take our place. John 3, 16 and 17. And be crucified for our sins. We were guilty of Not Him. We was guilty. Not Him. He had mercy on us. He traded our sins for his righteousness. When he went back to heaven, he sprinkled his blood, his own blood, on heaven's mercy seat and upon the altar of heaven. Mercy is not motivated. Mercy is motivated by uncompromising and unconditional love. Mercy is when we didn't get the punishment or judgment we deserve. Mercy is getting God's pity. Mercy is the opposite of judgment. Hallelujah. Mercy is showing loving kindness. Instead of wrath, hostility, and punishment, God's mercy says we got the love and pity instead of judgment. And God's grace said we got the good we didn't deserve. There's nothing we can do to obtain salvation, no good works to receive it. It's a gift of God. So is mercy and grace. It's a gift we can't earn. We just receive it. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Psalms 103, verse 8, 11, and 17. It said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And that's 1 Chronicles 16, 34. If it wasn't for mercy, our sins would pile up to heaven. Thank God for mercy. He forgives and pardons us. We need to pardon and forgive one another. If there's one thing the body of Christ needs, is love and mercy for one another. God forgave us and commanded us to forgive one another and love one another. Hosea 6, 6. He said, For I desired mercy and not sacrifice and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. Hosea 4 1 said, Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, for the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. The people forsook God's truth, his laws, and his mercy. God wanted his people to have mercy just like him. He wants that today in the church. Hosea 4 6 says, God said, My people destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. Knowledge of what? Knowledge of a holy God. God desires mercy and not sacrifice. How can we say that we love God and pray and hold aught in our heart toward anyone? God doesn't want that anymore. He called these people hypocrites. God desires mercy, and that's in Matthew 15, 8. This people, he said, draw nigh with their heart and their mouths. Draws nigh, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. This people draws nigh with their mouth and their lips. But their heart is far from me. The Lord doesn't hear us when we have sin or unforgiveness in our heart. And we don't have mercy and forgive others. That's in Matthew 6, chapter 6, verse 12, 14, and 15. It says that we have to forgive as we stand before God. That he can hear us uh, uh, and answer our prayers. We have to forgive others as he said. That was over in when Jesus told him to model prayer to pray. He says as we stand and pray before God, we have to forgive others. He said, our Heavenly Father, forgive us. Psalm 66, 18 says, If I regard iniquity, sin in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. God wants us to love each other and have mercy upon each other and forgive each other. 
or it cuts off our relationship and blessing with the Lord. Matthew 9, 13, the Lord said, He would have mercy and not sacrifice. To sacrifice was to kill an animal, shed the blood, and be forgiven of sin. But we can't be forgiven if we don't forgive. We have to forgive. That's why God's mer God desires mercy. To pardon and forgive others. Matthew 23, verse 23 through 33. Jesus rebuked the scribes and Pharisees because they were only obeying part of the law. They didn't have mercy or love or faith. Matthew 23, verse 2. Jesus said the Pharisees and scribes sat in Moses' seat. And in other words, Moses was the judge of Israel. They were sitting in judgment against people. They were hypocrites. They told the people what to do and weighed them down with burdens and laws. Jesus told them, he said, you, you put in your tithes and the offerings and everything, but you've overlooked the weight of your matters of love, mercy, and judgment. But they themselves didn't even do them. They would get up and preach the gospel and tell people how to live, and even some ministers doing this today, but they live a double standard life. We need to repent of that. Luke 18, 9, verse 9 through 14. The, the, Repub the publicans received mercy because he asked God that repented. There was two men in the temple. One said, God, I fast, and I give tithes and all this, and I'm not like this, this heathen over here. Now, who went away justified? God said that man that cried out for mercy was justified because he that exalts himself, he will humble. He was more justified than that one man sitting there confessing his righteousness. He was self-righteous. We need to get out of that self-righteousness in the church and have mercy again toward people. The Bible says, judge not, and you'll be not judged. Condemn not, and forgive, and you'll be not condemned, and you'll be forgiven. We need to have mercy in the church again for one another. Matthew 24, verse 12, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold in the end times. That's an end time sign. Jesus was talking to his people. Most of the church today is like Revelation 3, verse 4 through 22. They're lukewarm and they're cold. And God wants us, like in Revelation chapter 2, verse 4, he wants his love to be restored back in us again. And many let the cares of this world choke the word out and they become unfruitful. And I'm telling you today, we need to repent. Galatians 5, chapter 5, verse 22 says, Love, joy, and peace is the fruits of the Spirit. We need that in the church again. God desires mercy in the church again, loving kindness. God bless you. We're out of time. I pray you got something out of this, and we'll see you next time. Have mercy. God bless you.